Hi everybody, Dr. Britt Pally Daniel, MD. I'm a neurologist, headache doctor, and today I'll be YouTubing on a subject that's pretty unusual called retinal migraine. All right, well, the retina is the back part of the eye. That's where there are blood vessels, the retinal tissue, which contains light, sensitive rods and cones, and the central circular spot where the optic nerve attaches and the fovea, which is the spot for a fine central vision like we use for reading newsprint. Migraine is a neurologic, genetic, medical problem affecting 12% of the world population. 25% of women and 6% of men have migraine. And migraine is one of the top 10 disabling conditions. In medical school, they teach that the most disabling or most painful conditions are childbirth, a kidney stone or migraine headache. Migraine attacks usually last four to 72 hours. They're usually one-sided, like right or left temple, behind the eye on one side. They can be moderate to severe, so on a scale of one to 10 migraines, they're five to 10, although many of my patients will laugh and tell me they're 20, describing how horrible they are. They're throbbing and associated with sensitivity to light and sound and sometimes odors. Most persons who have a migraine in bed cannot can be up and they're disabled for work or their normal life. So what is retinal migraine? The International Classification of Headache Disorders, ICDH3, describes retinal migraine as consisting of repeated attacks of monocular visual disturbance, which may come with scintillation, scotomas, or blindness, and migraine headache. Uh, so if you want an idea, this, this occurs in patients with migraine with aura. If you go to my web page and go into um, the whole subject of migraine with aura, I have a bunch of scotomas and visual things people might see, flashing lights, zigzagging lines, and stuff like that. So the ICDH3 diagnostic criteria <coughs> for retinal migraine are A, at least two attacks of filling criteria B and C. B is the R consists of fully reversible monocular positive and or negative visual phenomena. In doctor talks, the positive visual phenomena are zigzagging lines, holes, uh, halos, something you'll see in your eye don't normally see. Or negative things are scotomas or lack of vision, which means a circle or a blind area. And the patient may have con confirmation of their visual loss by a clinical visual field examination the patient's drawing after making clear instructions of a monocular visual field defect. Monocular means one eye. And then see at least two of the following characteristics. The RS belt spreads gradually across the eye or their vision in less five or less minutes. The RS symptoms last five to 60 minutes. And the RS accompanied or followed within 60 minutes by headache of a migraine type. And also this condition is not accounted for any other kind of headache or visual loss symptoms and things like Amaurosis fugax, which is a sign of a, like a transient ischemic attack or warning symptom of a stroke, has not occurred. Amaurosis fugax is Latin. It means pleading blindness. It may occur from a piece of cholesterol that's in the carotid artery that slips off and goes to the brain and causes temporary visual loss. So people don't have that with this. Some patients who complain of one-sided visual loss, in fact, have hemianopia. It means visual loss in the same part of both the right and left eye, such as the right eye would be in the nasal part and the left eye in the temporal part. Some cases without headache have been reported, but migraine as the underlying etiology cannot be ascertained. So you really can't call it retinal migraine if they didn't have migraine headache types of events. Retinal migraine is an extremely rare cause of transient monoclonal monoocular visual loss. Cases of permanent visual loss have occurred with migraine and been reported. And appropriate investigations are required if you have these symptoms to rule out other causes of transient monocular blindness. So this is a migraine visual aura occurring just in one eye or what may be referred to as a monocular distribution rather than the usual bilateral homonymous both eye pattern. According to the theory of Liao, a spreading wave of electrical depolarization moving across one side of the occipital brain is what causes migraine with RF patients to see the scintillating zigzag pattern in both halves of the visual fields. 
in a homonymous pattern, a carefully observant and carefully instructed patient may notice the visual aura in, for example, the right halves of both eyes. This would com compromise the right eye nasal field and the left eye temporal field. And then the visual aura should be followed by a typical migraine without aura headache. Now, every neurologist knows that patients best note images in their dominant field. In the example which I've just talked about, the dominant field would be the right eye. And only on close questioning would the patient be able to admit seeing the spectral image in the non-dominant part of the field, for instance, in the right part of the left eye. Sometimes the patient may be asked if they saw the image with both eyes closed, and this memory may then help them declare the occurrence of the non-dominant field. Examiners who actually see patients during the attack of visual loss commonly have the patient do an alternative eye covering test to differentiate a monomous from the monocular pattern, although Spearings, who's a neurology writer, says he never found that to be helpful to him. If a properly educated patient can draw what they saw and the image is just in one eye and followed by a migraine headache, then this is what is termed retinal migraine. But images and visual loss just to one eye bring up the possibility of another medical problem causing these symptoms other than migraine, as I mentioned before, like a warning of a stroke, amaurosis, fugex. So a neurologic exam should be performed. That should have the ability to exclude a possible embolic source. Embolic means a little tiny blood clot. So the patient should have an EKG, echocardiogram, carotid duplex scanning, uh, MRA scanning, CAT scanning, or brain scan, and angiography. So how do you diagnose retinal migraine? Well, an ophthalmology exam with an ophthalmoscope during attack may show decreased blood flow in the eye. In this case, the ophthalmologist may be able to make a confident diagnosis of retinal migraine, but just think how very rare that is. Most attacks are usually brief. It's more likely the eye exam will be normal and the patient will be diagnosed based on a previous account and history of symptoms. Now, it's kind of confusing in the history of this term retinal migraine because there are other terms used to describe that. And it's most appropriately called retinal migraine. That's what it's called the Bible, so-called Bible for headache diagnosis. So the other terms are anterior visual pathway migraine, monocular migraine, ocular migraine, retinal vasospasm, transient monocular visual loss, and retinal spreading depression. Retinal migraine is oftentimes mislabeled as ocular migraine, but ocular migraine is not in the International Classification of Headache. So what's the description of the visual images patients will see? If they're positive visual images, they'll see flashing rays of light, zigzag lightning patterns, bright colored streaks, and halos are di diagonal lines. If they're ne negative visual losses, they have blurring, blank areas, blank dots, are spots in the field of vision, and that's really called a scotoma. But what's the most common patient population? That is a woman in their 20s or 30s who have a history of migraine with aura. That's who gets it. What is the differential diagnosis of this condition? Well, amaurosis fugex from embolic carotid disease or optic neuropathy, vasculitis, hypercoagulable states, illicit drug use, rheumatologic disorders. What are possible aggravating features of these attacks? Stress, smoking, high blood pressure, estrogen-based oral contraceptive pill, exercise, bending over, dehydration, high altitude, low blood sugar, and excessive heat. What's the treatment of retinal migraine? Well, there's currently insufficient clinical information to support recommendations for preventive or acute treatment of this entity. It's just too rare, and we don't have enough cases, really. Therapy of the acute attack of retinal migraine should not include tryptans or ergotamine drugs because they cause vasoconstriction, and you don't want that in this condition. Estrogen-based oral contraceptive pills should not be used, and all patients should be advised to quit smoking. That was a hard one. Prophylactic medications have been tried with anecdotal benefit include calcium channel blockers, the antidepressants amitriptyline and nortriptyline, propranolol, valproic acid, 
and topiramate. There's currently no data on the use of the new GPET acute therapy migraine drugs. So this just came out March 2020. Or CGRP preventive drugs such as Amavig, Ajovi, or Emgality for preventive treatment of migraine. There's nothing on that for treating uh, retinal migraine. Aspirin should be given because of its antiplatelet activity. Well, what is the prognosis? Although retinal migraine is considered a benign condition, very rarely permanent symptoms can persist after the attacks. Next, I'm going to read a case report from Evans and Grossberg, uh, writing in Headache Journal in 2008. The title of their article was, Expert Opinion, Retinal Migraine, Migraine Associated with Monocular Visual Symptoms. And it was presented as a case, and they discussed pathophysiology workup and also treatment. Their case summary follows. This 25-year-old man reports a 12-year history of similar headaches occurring about one to two times every month. He develops a left or right temple throbbing, which is mild at first, and later becomes 10 over 10, like a severe headache associated with nausea, vomiting, light, and noise sensitivity. Sounds like a migraine there, right? About 30 minutes after the onset of all the headaches, he develops sudden total darkness where he cannot see in the eye opposite the headache, lasting about four hours. So if it's a right-sided headache, it's the left eye where he couldn't see. The headache is severe for about five hours and then mild for 24 to 36 hours. Aspirin or acetaminophen is mild help. He tries to go to bed. He had never seen a physician for the headaches before. His past medical history was negative. There was no family history of migraine, and his neurologic exam was normal. The authors Evans and Grossberg stated, the most likely cause of recurrent stereotypical monocular vision loss and associated with headaches is retinal migraine. Secondary causes of transient one-sided visual loss are less likely to be found in cases that have been recurring for a long period of time. These authors felt that the true occurrence of retinal migraine was unknown, but it was a rare entity. The type of visual disturbance noted may be positive or negative visual disturbances of one eye. And regarding pathophysiologies, Evans and Grossberg said, the underlying pathophysiology of retinal migraine remains largely unknown. In some cases, basospasm of the retinal or ciliary circulation may have caused retinal or optic nerve ischemia. Ischemia means not, not enough blood. This may explain the amaurosis, that means blindness, and rare fundoscopic findings during the acute attack of retinal migraine. An alternative theory, theory is spreading depression of retinal neurons, a phenomenon that has been demonstrated in the chick retina. Similarly, it's possible that those rare cases with prolonged mono, monocular defects associated with migraine headaches could have been a mechanism similar to that seen in the cerebral cortex of migraineurs have presented. have a bibliography there, so if you want to look at more detail, let's go there on my website, please. So this is the end today of my discussion of retinal migraine. God bless any of you patients who have this or just migraine in general.